Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to Facebook Live on this lovely Tuesday here in Kansas. We're uh, all together here today. We are. Full house. <laughs> yeah. We got the Betsy, Alex, and Aaron show coming at you live <laughs> from Topeka. Uh, Linda is in Switzerland, so yes. she is actually going to be doing a live video from Switzerland, so stay tuned tomorrow. It's going to be posted. She's going to go into a boutique and tell us all about this boutique in Switzerland. So she's going to be like telling us, I think, about some of the garments that are there and probably some of the garments that you can use as inspiration to make some of our patterns. Of course. That's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> and she's painting and having fun. I called her and asked her if we could do a uh, FaceTime while she's oh. here on Facebook Live, but it's she's busy. just watching. So hi, Linda. <laughs> So we have a lot going on today. We do. We have a, a full itinerary yeah. for you. And Betsy and I are particularly fond of the fabrics that she's wearing and that are behind us. So the Liberty. Yes. Leave a comment <laughs> if you have actually been to Liberty of London. It's a one of a kind store. It is. It is the most beautiful store in the world. It really is. It really is. Yep. So leave a comment. Tell us why you like it. Tell us if you've been there. And to any of our London textile tour participants, you've definitely been there. Yes. So, <laughs> or tell us how you found it. How did you find out about Liberty? I learned about it. Um, my well, it's my sister's godmother. She has sewn forever, and she's a big Anglophile. And so when I went to England for school, she was like, "You got to go to Liberty." And not only did I go, but I ended up getting my internship there. Yeah. So she was real excited. But before that, even though I'd been sewing forever, I'd never known about their fabric. And, and what now did I you do. do when you worked there? I was in internship? the marketing department. Do you have like a highlight of that moment or that time? Yeah, you know, well, here's the funniest thing. So you would go, like Vogue magazine would send a list of things to go pick out. Because Liberty's not just fabric, it's got everything you can think of. So like Vogue would be like, we need X amount of dresses. So you got a credit card, they give you a credit card, and you would go down and like you would buy the dresses for Vogue, and that's how they kept track of what went in and went out. And there is a beautiful room that's full of like oriental carpets, mm -hmm. and it's in the basement, and it's just filled. It is like a cave of wonder. And I was down there picking up something for some magazine, and the card fell out of my hand and slipped under one of those oh. like pallets that have like a hundred carpets on it. And the guy who was working there that day, we were just like, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> but we managed to like. You finally got it. Yeah. I thought you said it was gonna like slip through the rugs, so then you had to go through all no, the rugs. No, it to, was like, under the thing. And we were like, oh. how far is that? Because yeah. are we gonna have to take all those rugs down? But we didn't. I just oh, no. got on the floor and crawled under yeah. with my arm as best I could. That's what I think about. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, I did just get, when I was there in May or whatever it was, I got a zebra rug. Nice. For my zebra bathroom. So, yeah, they do have fabrics, they have home decor that's beautiful, they have really they have everything. antiques, they have clothing, yeah. books, and yeah. um, I think I saw recently they were doing ear piercings. Did you see that? Oh, yeah, Maria Tosh. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep, they have piercing a whole ear piercing store. section. Yep. So, you know, if you've never gotten your ears pierced, that's yeah. the place to go. It's like a whole go. experience. You can go yeah. there and do all kinds of things. Yeah. And cafe. Yeah. So we're going to get to a little bit more of that in artists that are in Liberty. We have a sneak peek of a getaway. Or not getaway. Giveaway. That's giveaway. Coming up. <laughs> um, speaking of getaway, Linda's on a getaway. Yeah. You had a getaway to... Disney I did. I did. I yeah, had some getaways. Yeah. We're all, We're all ready away. for getaways. <laughs> <laughs> um, but first, since it's June, let's talk about what's happening in June. We have our ET sleeve options okay. project. So with this class, you can get it for $50, and you get three sleeve patterns. The first one is a pleated sleeve, which is this one. I'll come up close so you can see it. So we use the basic ET, and we've given you three sleeve variations. And then in the class, we actually teach you how to make these sleeve variations. The second one is a gathered sleeve, which Betsy is going to talk about in a little yep. bit. And the third one, again, this is just using a basic ET, the basic shape, 
but we've added three different sleeves. This third one is a tie sleeve. So it's longer, you can shorten or lengthen this. You can really shorten or lengthen any of these. In the class, it's pre-recorded, and we talk about how to actually do that in the class. Um, it also comes with the Q&A that was pre-recorded. So get the class for $50. You can also get a kit that includes yardage to make any three of these sleeves. And leave a comment if you've made this ET sleeve. You know, speaking of shortening and lengthening, I think the sleeve on a lengthened ET dress would be really awesome. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be so lovely? Mm -hmm. And it would be such an easy, it's a pretty easy lengthen to make a dress out of this. Mm -hmm. In fact, on the blog, um, years and years ago, I did do a blog where I lengthened the ET into like a above the knee dress, and so you can find that on there. Um, but you could go, you could go all the way down to the ground. But I think True. this sleeve with like a, um, like a longer dress would be mm -hmm. so nice. And these kits are a lovely jersey knit, and of course the sleeve and the actual shirt body is in an entire knit. But it would be fun to consider doing the sleeve in a woven. Mm -hmm. um, but our kits include the yardage all in knit. But um, those are for sale as well. You can get a kit for the ET sleeve options course. But in the class also you learn how to work with knit fabric, you learn how to make a really nice ready to wear binding, how to do hems. So it's a project based class but you learn how to work with knit and it's a really great way to yeah. kind of get an intro in using knit mm -hmm. fabrics. So Yeah and there's like a really detailed, uh, I know a lot of our um, viewers today have probably made ETs before, mm -hmm. um, but if you haven't or if you're new to us, you know, there's a really detailed like how to put it, the sleeve in and it's just, mm -hmm. it's a real step-by-step -step, um, like master class in t-shirt making. Mm -hmm. So it's a great we one. We all love a summer shirt yeah. as we're wearing today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about our not getaway, but giveaway. <laughs> Um, so Betsy came up with this idea. She's been seeing some of this happening on Instagram. So if you're part of, you know, ASG groups or quilting groups, it's pretty common to have a challenge out there. It is. And so, you know, we often look for different things for inspiration, um, whether it's color or pattern. We're always sharing with you, like, mood boards we put together and the inspiration items. Um, and including like this, what I've made today, like the color palette I um, took off of some artwork that I've had in my room for the last couple weeks by Mary Blair, who was an artist for Disney. And um, I just got back from Disneyland. And so I've had these little cards propped up around my room. And I love the pink and orange color combination. And so when I was thinking about what to make, I went for pink and orange. So it can be as simple as that. But I thought, wouldn't it be fun if we found a fabulous artist and we asked our community to take inspiration from one of their artworks to make their own, either ensemble or just single garment using our patterns. So mm -hmm. um, we have found a wonderful lady Yes, we had a meeting about this, and we found this artist um, on Liberty of London's site. Yes. So she actually sells her artwork on Liberty of London. So I think if you go to the Liberty site and they have like artwork. A, like a wall art section. Yeah. She's there. Her name is Naomi Munuyo. I think that's how you Maybe pronounce Munio? it. Maybe Munio? I don't Maybe know. We Munio. don't know. Sorry, Naomi. We so, apologize for, for your last name. She is an artist, uh, I believe, from the UK. She's from the UK. Um, I think she studied at Central St. Martin's mm -hmm. for some time, and she does a lot of like figurative or still life work. But her use of color, I love, and her use of pattern within the artwork is really am amazing. Um, there's one on the Liberty site, I don't know if we have it printed out, but it's a woman with a sewing machine, and I was like, mm -hmm. well, that's perfect. Uh, we totally need that. Um, yeah, like you said, I love her use of color. And um, she, you can follow her on Instagram. Her, hash, her Instagram handle is listed above, and below is the hashtag that we're going to use for the giveaway. Yes. So I will show you. A little, did I show this one already? I will show you a little mock up of <laughs> something I did uh, this morning to kind of give you guys an inspiration, some inspiration about what to do for the challenge. 
So you're going to take an artist, you're going to take this artist, take this artist, Naomi, and you're going to go through her Instagram, maybe Liberty's website, maybe her own website, and find a piece of artwork that you like. So I drew this up today on my iPad with my pencil. So I took that jar artwork that she did, I think it's called Stripey Jug. And I loved this because I already had in my head this striped fabric that we have on our website to use for pants. I think it would be fun to use the Chesney pants, some wide leg, bright striped pant, would I think would be so fun. <laughs> so I saw this jug and I thought, okay, what's a fabric I can use? Then I thought of the other colors within the picture and I wondered how I could make a shirt. So our Cubist Faces fabric, I think our most popular fabric ever. I took that as well as the Jersey knit. And then you'll see down here at the bottom, I kind of sketched it out. So I took the mace on top and I kind of played with where the fabrics would go. And then the Chesney pants, I sketched those out. So the deadline for this is by the end of July, that's 2023, not 2024. Oh, no. <laughs> so end of July, you're going to take a, a piece of artwork from Naomi and get inspiration from it and kind of build an outfit around her look from the picture. And using our patterns, you're going to create an outfit. Maybe it's not pants and a, uh, a shirt, maybe it's a dress, maybe, you know, you're welcome to get as creative yeah. as you want. But you're going to take our patterns with our fabric and use this hashtag here at the top, hashtag TSWX Menuyo Challenge. And that's the hashtag you're going to use for the challenge. So you're going to either share it to Instagram or Facebook, or if you don't have Instagram or Facebook, you can send it to us and yeah. we will post it. So um, we will post the details about the challenge on the blog later this week. Um, we have a big photo shoot today, so it's not going to happen today. Um, but we will do that, and we will include all of the artist details, the hashtag details. We do need you, when you post it, to hashtag it and then also tag us in your um, post, wherever you put it. If you can't post, just email it to us, and we'll post it for you. Um, everyone who participates will get a little discount. And then at the end, we're going to do a raffle drawing for a $100 gift certificate for everyone who participates. Ooh. So everybody gets a little something for participation. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it, you know, maybe it's just a shirt that you make, but tell us where the inspiration came from, from her artwork, what it meant to you, why you chose that. So that's, that's kind of what we're looking for. And I'm going to post stuff on Instagram through the month to remind you. And also maybe give you some ideas for your own garment. So I don't know. I think it'll be really fun. I'd love to do more challenges and just like see more of what you guys are making because um, we're always showing you what we're making. But sometimes mm -hmm. we, we need a little we need a little inspiration yeah. ourselves. So we're looking for you to help us out with that. So yeah. Oh, and I forgot to mention we're having you guys comment on a lot of things today. But we had this <laughs> meeting yesterday, and Betsy brought up this question what's your favorite artist or who's your favorite artist yes. so if you want to go ahead also and leave another comment and tell us who your favorite artist is because um, we took some time kind of figuring out who we wanted to feature and I think because Naomi is featured right now in Liberty and today we're talking about Liberty that became the, the mm -hmm. tie-in so leave a comment tell us your favorite artist so that we might use this challenge again later yeah. on and continue to do different challenges yeah. based on things you guys like as well so I think it'll be fun. Yeah, so check Naomi out, and like Betsy said, we'll keep posting things and make sure you guys get all the info. So yeah. I'm going to exit and let Betsy, oh. I think, talk about <laughs> what's sure. up next. Do we have any questions mm -hmm. about the challenge before we move on? We do have one okay. question. Um, it, do they need to make the garments, or is it just um, showing their inspiration and what they would make? I think, I mean, it would be awesome if you can make the garments. That would be ideal. Um, it would. I suppose. That's why we tried to give you enough time to do it. <laughs> yeah. Ideally, you've made it, but of course, if you have like an inspirational image like yes, this, you can we always would like post to see it. That too. Yeah. We so, want to see it all. I mean, my challenge then is to actually make this. So I drew this up. This is kind of my inspiration. 
I need to make these pants in this top by the end of July. So you got a whole month. Yeah, a month and a bit. I it's could not do even it. the end of June. It's only kind of yeah. the end of June. Yeah. So yes, please. I have no getaways planned, so I could sew. <laughs> all right. Okay, that's all the questions. Oh, all cool. right. Well, that's it. Um, well, then you are left with me, and we are going to talk about a. I'm going to move these from behind me. Um, a variation that I put together for the Zane top. So the Zane top. Oh, actually, Alex, could you come back here, please? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am well, wearing, the wearing the Zane. She's wearing the Zane in top. a woven. This is not Liberty fabric, but it was a pattern we released a few years ago, and I like to give a little plug that I did name it. After. after a boy band, which I love boy bands. <laughs> so One Direction, shout out, they're not together anymore, but Zane it was a member of the boy band named One Direction. Yes. So this is the Zane top, and it can be made in a woven or a knit. So here it is on me in a woven. Mm -hmm. And when it's a woven, it has a little bit of a different construction, which in the pattern it includes both ways, how to make it in a woven and in a knit. So. Mm -hmm. so just a little, if you've not made the Zane, um, so it's got a nice little scoop collar on the woven, and then it's got three pieces in the front, and you've got this wonderful panel that drapes on the side. So it's, it's actually really flattering because it draws the eye down, and it gives it a really flattering shape on the body, and it's fun to fun to sew. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing it, you know, you can mix and match fabrics, you can make it easy, you can go all out. Mm -hmm. And then in the back, we have an invisible zipper in this one, but um, in the instructions it has um, illustrations key for hole. making a keyhole neckline with mm -hmm. a hook and eye. Mm -hmm. Now the knit version, which is this lovely lady, uh, same obviously design, the only difference is that we do a um, neckband in the instructions. Mm -hmm. And I love it in a knit because the, the drape is even more accentuated um, than it is with the woven. Mm -hmm. And when I make this, I usually lengthen um, this piece a couple inches. Um, we've had, I think, some people make this into a dress. Mm -hmm. um, Samantha, I believe, has made the Zane into a dress. Um, the, sh the sleeves can be shortened or lengthened. Yeah. But I love this pattern because of its versatility and being able to use it with lots of different types of fabrics and with these pieces. Of course, in this check or in one singular fabric, you know, you might not be able to tell the different pieces in it, but yeah, when you use it, different fabrics, you can you can play with it. So. Yeah, it has a lot of options to it. Um, it's not a pattern that we talk about very often, mm -hmm. um, but it is a really, you know, it's one that we use a lot. So mm -hmm. I don't know, it's been ignored on Facebook, mm -hmm. I should say. But um, Linda found a wonderful ready-to-wear shirt that we were like, oh, it's such a good shirt. Um, and when we looked closely at it, we were like, we could make that out of the same. Mm -hmm. um, so we did. It, um, this is it. This is the ruffled Zane. So actually, I'm glad you're here because it more easily illustrates mm -hmm. the changes that we made. Um, so this Zane has a left gathered strip that goes to the back. And then we lengthen the right side. So the, the asymmetrical look of it is actually opposite of what it was. Um, there are lengthening, um, like I lengthen this guy and I lengthen this guy. The, it's a really pretty easy change to make to make this thing. We, um, we do have a tutorial for you. Um, but basically, you're gonna, I'm going to use you. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, you lengthen this left upper bodice piece. You get rid of the panel piece. And then you lengthen the right bodice piece. And then you just replace the panel piece with a gathered strip. Um, easy as that, really. Mm -hmm. And you can do on this version, come back. We did do the invisible zipper, and that is a really nice look. That is not in the instructions, but you can make that change really easily, or you can do the keyhole. Mm -hmm. So this one I made out of our new Liberty Tapestry Tree fabric. 
Love and this it. is an actual, okay. it's not just tonalon, it is organic tonalon. Oh, really? So it's extra soft oh, and lovely. Okay. And I think it's really cute. Now, I made a skirt to wear with mine, but I do think Picasso pants would mm -hmm. be really cute with it, pencil mm -hmm. pants. What would you mm -hmm. wear with it? I would say the Picassos, yeah. Um, the Hudson's, any of our pants really. Mm -hmm. I love right now even a wide leg with a wide shirt. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what's in, in style for summer and spring fashion this has been this year. But yeah, Aaron, I didn't know this you was organic. Um, well, I'm loving the full length West Ends right now. Okay, so, all right. Um, so I the mean, wide with the wide? The mm -hmm. wide with the mm -hmm. wide. Yeah, they just started offering organic. Now, not all of their fabrics are, are organic, but this one is. We have a number of them. This one is as well, I think. So, so tell anyone watching about the, maybe they haven't heard of Tonalon. Why is that so wonderful? Yeah, so Tonalon is uh, Liberty's kind of signature fabric. Once upon a time, Liberty made, I mean, just a, a bunch of different substrates. They started um, producing fabric in the 1800s. And then I think like by the 1930s, they produced like all different kinds of fabric. But now they've really scaled back and the Tonalon is their signature fabric. It's 100% cotton um, grown near Lake Tana. And then it is, I believe, processed and milled in Italy. Um, it is- Where's Lake Tana? I kind of think it's Ethiopia. In... Okay. <laughs> I know it's in Africa and I always, mess up the country, but okay. I think it's Ethiopia. No, I Tell me if that. I'm wrong. I, yeah, I could totally <laughs> be wrong. Um, so what the cotton is, it is the softest, lightest cotton you have ever touched. It feels like silk, but it works like cotton. So you have the, um, the, the feeling of this light, um, beautiful fabric but you're not messing with the slippery issues of mm -hmm. the silk. You're not messing with that kind of functional sewing problems of that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really, it's beautiful. You know, it, it is cotton, so it wrinkles, but it doesn't wrinkle badly, you know, mm -hmm. for such a thin fabric. I think it's really like a useful fabric. I wear it yeah. a lot and I'm not like constantly ironing and stuff. It just really wears well. Mm -hmm. um, Did you, for those that might ask about washing it, it does wash beautifully. Did you wash your? I did. I did, did pre-wash it because um, I was being a good Facebook liver, <laughs> and we should pre-wash our fabric. Um, I pre-wash it cold water, delicate, and then I dry it on low. Now, after the garment's made, I will um, vary between that. I'll probably hang it instead of drying it mm -hmm. from now on. And then I also kind of intersperse um, doing the vodka spray instead of washing it just to keep it like a, a less rough, mm -hmm. a less rough cleaning process. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do with my, my Liberty. I wanna, I wanna baby it. You don't have to baby it, but I like to baby it. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful and it's, yeah. she's right, it feels wonderful. Yeah, so um, to make the gathered Zane, like I said, we have a tutorial for you, which has all of the actual dimensions for the lengthening and the um, pattern piece that you need for the ruffle. You will need to have the Zane pattern as well. They go together, so keep that in mind. Um, but what I wanted to talk to you today is about my, <laughs> my um, in-depth process for putting on, a, making a ruffled pattern piece and putting it on a pattern when you're making it yourself and you don't have markings for it because I like to have a even ruffle and so this is my kind of probably too in-depth way to do it but maybe somebody else will appreciate it so I'm going to show that to you now she's going to back up and we're going to get a board And what you guys get to see is some poor drawing skills, but <laughs> it should be enough to um... teach her Betsy. I'm here for it. Okay. So with this shirt, I wanted to, it's, it's actually quite a long ruffle piece. It is 48 inches long. Um, and the bodice piece is definitely not 48 inches long. So what I did to make a nice even ruffle 
is we have the ruffle piece. And some of this instructions are in the tutorial and then these are just a little extra if you want to go the full, full way. So I start by marking the seam lines at 5 eighths of an inch and then right there. And so then I do everything from the seam lines. And what I do is I fold and actually I do a pin instead of just a mark because then you can see it better, I think. So I like to fold, match the pins, and find the middle. And that is what I do, and I do mark A. <laughs> and then Erin's laughing at me, because she was like, oh my god, it's so much. <laughs> um, and then I do a pin here. And then I do that again with the left. I bring the left pin to the A pin, and then find the middle of that, and then that's B, and then I do the right pin to the A pin and do C. And then, just because that's not quite enough, <laughs> I went ahead and did A and C for D and then E. Now, the reason I did this is because then you can go on the bodice, which looks something like this. That looks pretty good. Looks like a bodice. Um, so, like, this is your two side bodices sewn together. Sorry. Can you see? Ish. There we go. Yeah. So, that's kind of what we're looking at here. And then this is your side seam. So, on the side bodice, you're going to mark your 5 8 inch. And then you're going to do the same thing, basically, which is you mark your 5 8 inch in from the edges. Find your center point. So A is going to match the center side seam. That's the easy one. And then you go through and you bring this together, find the middle ground here. Bring this together, find the middle ground here, and do it again here and here. I mean, you could do more, you could do less. But what that offers you is that when you go to put it together, because you can see that the ruffle goes on top of the bodice. I'll let you back up there. Okay. When you place the ruffle onto your bodice pieces, you've got these dots to match. And then you can just let the gathers kind of run loose. And then as you sew, because you're only pinned at the dots, you can really work to even those ruffles out. Um, I really like doing gathers, but I get really annoyed if they're off. And once you're stitched, you know, it's not, it's not hard to undo them, but I think we all can agree that it's a real pain to have to undo them after you've, you've stitched your ruffle to your garment. So by making your own even spots, that's gonna help you get like an even ruffle all the way through. Now, um, maybe that's maybe that's more than <laughs> than most people need, but I, I really like that technique. We do have a really good gathered ruffle technique in the Zane shirt pattern. Not the Zane shirt pattern. I'm wearing that in the Venice shirt pattern. Um, the Venice, if you remember. has this ruffle that goes around back into this little panel here. You can see it a little bit better. This is the uh, Venice Du, which we have a little tutorial for. And if you really want a nice step-by-step -step instruction of how to do a gathered ruffle, you should get the Venice pattern. And we also have a really nice tutorial that we're putting on sale this week for the Venice. Um, that really lays out like how to do a perfectly gathered ruffle. Um, I know Linda likes to use like, top stitching thread for the gathering to make sure it doesn't break. So there are a lot of like tips and tricks in there to make that an easier process for you. So um, 
just one more look at the Venice before we put it in. I love this shirt. It's got this super soft. Is this linen? I think it's a linen. I think it's a linen viscose mix. So, any questions about my gathering process? It seems like a really satisfying it process. Is. And I saw it a comment is. come through that this is what, I forget who it was, but someone does this every time and no ripping. She yeah, it, it's so. just, I, I did both of the gathers this way and I didn't have to undo them, so I was really happy with it. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is great. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we do have some questions. Okay. Um, do you use a ruffle attachment? I did not use a ruffle attachment. I just did the old fashioned base gather and I pinned it on like I told you. Maybe I should get a ruffled attachment. I wouldn't have to do all that. <laughs> um, a couple questions about um, the fabric. Is there a shrinkage on the um, the Liberty fabric? I've never noticed any major shrinkage with Liberty, um, and I've worked with it quite a bit. So I haven't tested. I've never tested like we often recommend doing like a four inch square and washing that so you can see what happens after you take it out. And I've never done that, but I have worked with it a lot and I've never noticed anything. Um, let's see, how much fabric do you need for the ruffle zane? So um, you can use the regular fabric requirements for the zane, for the ruffle zane. So we thought we'd make it easy for you. What is the vodka spray? Oh, the vodka spray. <laughs> I was going to ask that too. <laughs> so, um, because I don't like, you know, even when you put something in the wash on delicate, it, it's really hard on your clothes. So, I've been using this vodka spray method, which they use a lot in like costumes and the theater. And so, I do a spray bottle and I do one to one vodka and water. And then, after I wear something, I turn it inside out and I spray it with this vodka mixture and what it does it is vodka is a sanitizer so it sanitizes the garment and it takes away any smells and then so you're clean but without like the rough rough and tumble washing machine um, so I'll do that for you know however many wears and then I wash it regularly too um, I know one time we talked about this and someone said you have to be careful with yellows because vodka can um, change yellows. I always do it from the inside out for one thing, just just to be sure. And you know, if nothing else, maybe veer two waters to one vodka if you're iffy. But I haven't had any color problems. So um, have you ever put different necklines on the Zane? I don't know that we have put different necklines on the Zane. Um, I <laughs> think it would be great with a V neck or just like maybe a scoopier neck. Um, that would be super easy and kind of nice to do. And with the knit too, if you just wanted to widen the neck, that would be easy to fix the band for it. Um, they want to see full length of both you and Alex, so give okay. that. We'll move our lady out of the way. Mm -hmm. Does she have a name? Should we name her mannequin? <laughs> I think we should. I you mean, guys, what should we name our mannequin? I have a Betty. Leave um, another comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the comments. Um, yeah, so I mixed my ruffled Zane. I made just a simple gathered skirt out of another Liberty fabric because I thought the three of them together were just, just lovely. Um, I showed this outfit to my husband and he was like, I mean, like it kind of breaks my brain. Like why, <laughs> why is the shirt shorter on one side? And I was like, it's asymmetrical. And I was like, can you do that? Like you can do that. <laughs> he was woo, thrown off. Yeah, Betsy's head to toe liberty. I love this. Yeah. And this is Betsy's signature two hour skirt technique, <laughs> is. which isn't a sewing workshop pattern, but it probably should be. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it's a two hour project. We all need those. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm cheating. I'm not wearing sewing workshop pants. However, I love these pants. I recently just got them in Santa Fe. And what I love about them is they're out of this, this uh, pop, cotton poplin fabric that is kind of all the rage right now with shirts, pants. It's very slick, um, they're lightweight, but I love the drawstring at the bottom. 
So Erin has to go real far back because I'm mm -hmm. kind of tall, I suppose. But um, this drawstring at the bottom. So, you know, you could think about lengthening any of our pants. I, I think about the Hudson's. The Hudson's have, am I correct, it has the lantern shape at the bottom or is it the Picasso? It's Picasso. Picasso, okay. So lengthen the Picasso, get a full length Picasso, and then have um, add a drawstring at the bottom. Like? that gathers since it's gathering week. So you could lengthen a pant and at the bottom um, include a drawstring and then tie it so that it's gathered. Mm -hmm. So You could do it with the West Ends mm -hmm. if you want like a big old mm -hmm. gather. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the pant has a, a nice patch pocket as well. So the, uh, <laughs> the um, what am I thinking of? What's the type of cargo pants? Cargo pants style, so anyway. Are you putting cargo in your cargo pocket? I'm putting, <laughs> I did put my phone in there earlier. It was oh, see? Handy. Yeah, yeah. Useful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's show some other garments in Liberty Fabrics yeah. that we um, we can show you guys for inspiration. Can I do one thing? Since we have Betsy kind of um, get see your skirt. Um, somebody wanted to know what's under your skirt. Oh, that is a um, tool. What are they called? Crinoline? Crinoline, like a tool crinoline that I made. It's got gold sparkly tool. And so I made the gathered skirt, but I felt like it just needed a little little something extra. <laughs> so I pulled out my, my gold crinoline. I love it. Yeah, nice. all the puffs. So you didn't whip that up too, you already had it. No, 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 I already had yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, nice. Yeah. All right. It's, it's slipping, sorry Betsy about that. Betsy is next level. <laughs> I, I, if only I could be Betsy. It's amazing. Um, so this is a pattern we released last year called the Willow Blouse. And this is made in a, an amazing Liberty. This is a special edition kit we did last year. Yep. So here it is in a, another tonal, cotton, tonal on cotton. Mm -hmm. uh, the Willow Blouse we love. It has this open, with has a collar, uh, and then it has this kind of panel here that buttons. It has side slits that are asymmetrical, so one side um, has a slit and one side does not. We've had people make this in a dress. <laughs> it's a great mm -hmm. pattern. So the willow blouse is something to consider if you purchase fabric this week, you know, making a willow blouse. And it has short and long sleeves in the pattern, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people who ask about that, of you know, lengthening and shortening sleeves. So it's nice that that pattern has that option. Here is a splice top in Liberty Fabric. And what's great about the splice is this is actually a really flattering shape for a lot of people. Um, and it has these, I guess you call them splices in the side. So you can kind of mix and match fabrics with this pattern. And um, it's a good way to consider having multiple fabrics in, in your garment. And this one, um, the neck facing, I put on the outside. So that's why that band is there. Normally, you just it would just be the same fabric. But. I got creative. And Betsy already talked about the Venice and the uh, Venice de, but the Venice, this isn't a Liberty, but we do love the Venice shirts. And this is the uh, version of it that's short sleeve. Um, the Venice de is a tutorial that we have that's not on sale this week, but um, it's only $5. <laughs> so you could grab this tutorial and learn how to make this variation of the Venice. Uh, which doesn't have the, the buttons on the back. It just kind of features the, the back in a different way where it has all these gathers. It has the buttons in the back to kind of pull these two pieces together. And um, so that's a really fun summer shirt that you can consider as well. Well, and I like the Venice, um, Venice classic, if you will, the original Venice. You know, if you like the idea of gathers but maybe don't want it so at your, you know, basically your waist. I know for some people, maybe that's not like the most flattering placement for it. But if you do the Venice, then you get it a little bit longer. Um, so it's down a little bit further, which is flattering. And also, if you just prefer a button shirt, but kind of want this look, um, this is kind of the alternative, I think, for, for the ruffled thing. And mm -hmm. it'd just be beautiful in this fabric. And I'll show this again just because we talked about it in the beginning, even though it's a knit, but this is the ET sleeve option gathered. So you could take a, you know, a basic t-shirt and then this sleeve, if you purchase the course for $50, then you get the pattern for three different sleeves. So this gathered sleeve could be made out of a woven. You could get a fun Liberty fabric to pair mm -hmm. nicely with a knit. 
and consider doing you know a solid knit t-shirt with a fun woven gathered sleeve and in the class you learn how to gather just like Betsy did we learned Betsy's way to do it but we also have different tutorials that we're going to talk about here that are on sale that you can purchase to learn how to gather as well so we're all about gathering there you go Alex do you have a favorite Liberty garment like that, that I've wear. ever made or that wear uh, I know we were trying to pull some yesterday from our stash and our basement of different Liberty. I remember when we first developed the slice, I was making a pattern sample and I used a black Liberty fabric. I could not find it, but if we find it, I'll post it. Oh, but it had, um, it was a Liberty fabric. It was the splice top that we showed earlier and the side panel was another Liberty fabric. So if I find it in the basement somewhere down there, I'll post it later. But um, I do, when we did the Willows last summer, this was one of my favorite fabrics that we got last year. Mm -hmm. The kits sold out so fast, but the Willow is great with um, this type of cotton as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Erin, do you have a favorite Liberty garment? Ooh, I love that Willow. I think the, the combination of color mm -hmm. in that one is beautiful with the like, kind of copper, sienna, brown mm -hmm. colors, and the blues and the coral. It, they have a way with mixing colors that you might not traditionally think of. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I love that one. And I like the scale. I like maybe a little larger scale versus yes. a mini print. Yes. So. We recently got some Liberty fabric, so we're going to show you guys our new yeah. ones. And we have ones that we've had for a while, but um, Betsy's going to talk about, Betsy and Erin are going to talk about the fabrics that we have. Yes, ma'am. So, um, <laughs> shuffle around. Everybody has to move. <laughs> so, Liberty wow. is really known for their little prints. And normally we don't get the little prints, but they had a special collection this year this for the spring summer that it was just too good. We just couldn't couldn't resist. I know. Well, they take like modern, like I said, modern color combinations and put it with their kind of classic little mini prints, and that's mm -hmm. what I what I love. Even though maybe mini prints aren't my favorite on me, yeah, you know, being so tall, but um, but the way they put those colors together is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so over here are four of like the smaller prints. Um, this one, which is what I use for my ruffle, it's just, it's so bright and poppy and summery and like you just, it's just so great. Yeah. I love it yeah. so much. And then it has a matching friend in a different colorway. I love that. And they're so cute. And then this is more for our pastel friends. This is called, I think, Wildflower. Um, and that, just imagine that in like a Venice. It would be so pretty. Um, and for those of you who like me, I don't often use like a white background for a shirt. I don't know why, I just don't tend to it. So I love when they come out with darker backgrounds. So this one has been really nice. I love that. I've been looking at a lot of wallpaper lately um, and I love the ones with the dark background. It's yeah. so rich. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can really see, like, uh, this one comes with a dark background as well. We just don't have it up here. And it's so interesting to look at them together because it totally changes the look of the fabric. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Exactly. It makes it really sophisticated, I think. Yeah. All right. And then over here, we have, these are our little bit bigger of prints here. Um, these two are the same print, so one on the um, off-white background and then the other on more of a mustard background. So the off-white one is what I used for the other ruffled Zane. And this is, um, it's got some, you know, almost primary, like just slightly off primary colors, but you've got some royal blue and a little hit of pink and kind of an orangey red, I would say, because I know someone's going to ask. Um, <laughs> and some really great kind of emerald green. So this is an almost primary print. Um, and I think it's just beautiful. But this one is like jewel tones. So you've got some amazing turquoise. There's kind of a jade green. And then my favorite, like this dark fuchsia-y pink. 
I love that light pink in there too. Yeah, it really pops that, that pink off the uh, kind of mustard gold background. And I love that they paired it with the, the gold because then mm -hmm. I think, you know, if you're a jewel tone person, you might not gravitate towards the gold maybe as much, but then it allows you to wear the gold, but it gives you that pop of mm -hmm. the jewel tones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually think the one underneath this yellow one, gold one, goes well with the gold one? Yes. I would put them together. Yeah. Definitely. I think so. So you could think about with the ruffled Zane top, the picking one fabric and then just like Betsy did on her sample, one of the fabrics being that ruffle piece. Mm -hmm. So this one is, I think it's a poppy print and it looks like a painting when you get, you can see like the brush, brush strokes and it kind of has a melty watercolor quality to it. I love this one. I think it's so pretty. And you've got some kind of deep purple, teal, warm reds and pinks. Um, it's actually, it's interesting because it's got both cool and warm colors, so it really could work for a lot of people. Well, then I think if you wanted to have something a little more tone on tone, and but mixing fabrics, I think these two are a nice combination. Yeah, mm -hmm. these go great together as well. And this bottom one is kind of a middle ground between like a larger print and then you can see, sorry, now I'm just pulling everything everywhere, um, the contrast between the small print and this kind of middle one. So if you don't love a tiny print, but you do love like their classic small florals, this is kind of that in-between fabric. Mm -hmm. But there's more. <laughs> Yes, we got a pretty large shipment of Liberties in recently, so we, we do did. have quite a few. We do. Um, we got all the spring, summer, and then um, yeah, let's hold it over a special one. So this is the same as the cream and the gold tapestry, but it's for our blue friends. So we've got a lovely navy blue background. Um, Instead of the red or the fuchsia, this is definitely like I think of this as an orange. Don't you think it's orange? Mm -hmm. I think yeah, orange yeah. and pink. And mm -hmm. It's got a little bit of the pink, and then it's got the the turquoise. So mm -hmm. it's a really beautiful print. And I think that um, these tapestry prints, in particular, are really they're a great scale for garments. I think uh, so. Because mm -hmm. they're not too big, but you don't have like your teeny tiny prints. So. Right. These would be beautiful as a dress if you would lengthen the zane into a dress. Oh, that'd be lovely. The ruffle. I mm -hmm. think that would be really fun. This is a similar. Is this the same one? No, I don't think it is. I think it's very similar. But it's got kind of a kind of red. Like it's it's not a bright red. It's almost like a watermelony red. Like it's just right. got a hint of pink it's into it. Extremely saturated. Mm -hmm. And then it's got kind of a sky blue and then a little bit more pink. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And again, it's that larger scale, so mm -hmm. works well for. And this is a very soft blue paisley print, which I think is great. Again, the blue and the pink, a couple mm -hmm. different tones of the blue. I mean, imagine that with just like a pair of white linen Hudson mm -hmm. pants for the summer. Mm -hmm. It'd be fabulous. It yeah. Would be. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing, and I'm going to ask you, Erin. Okay. I'm going to bring our to-be-named mannequin back here. We did have a couple comments. People definitely we did? named their okay. dress yeah. forms. Uh, okay. We Tina had Turner, which was my oh, favorite. We love you, <laughs> Tina. Yes. Gertrude was a thought. Mm -hmm. Gertrude's nice too. Well, like we'll see. <laughs> we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to maybe have a contest. Mm -hmm. Maybe well, a naming contest. That would be fun. I think about that. Like I said, I have Betty at home. She mm -hmm. she is my dress warmer. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, so I was gonna ask you. Now I did not match the fronts on this saying okay. because the to me the pattern is all everywhere, and so I think you can get by without doing that. But what do you think? Do you think, would you match or not match? I wouldn't. You wouldn't I wouldn't. Match. I wouldn't mess with it. Um, I think sometimes with certain prints, if you get, too, if you dive in too much to it, you could end up like with prints in odd places, you know, like a right. signature floral piece. If, imagine, you know, this blue floral <laughs> piece, if it matched in the same place over here, I yeah. think that would be a little awkward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So I think be careful of it, be conscious of it, but um, I think with a flowing piece, like flowing mm -hmm. print, I think you're usually okay. But if you have a giant floral that gets cut off in the center. Right, that's you know, a different story. Pay it, I think paying attention mm -hmm. is, is good. Right. Well, I, I, I made it and then I thought, oh, I wonder if people would be like, she should have matched that print. Um, but to me, because it flows and it's kind of like an overall print like mm -hmm. that, I thought you could get away with not doing that. I think that's good. So, thank you. So you pointed it out, so now I'm I did, I know, I know. <laughs> like, it's one of those things that once you see it, then you're like, oh, do I need to, like, do that? So. Can we see the back of the Zanes? Sure. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah, so the ruffle goes all the way around from center front to center back. Yep. And so, like I said, you're going to lengthen your right side pieces, and you're going to lengthen the left side bodice, too. But you do have a, I think it's like a four-inch difference, thereabouts, between the ruffle and the bottom hem. Um, and, you know, you can lengthen. We, we do have measurements in the pattern, but you can lengthen and shorten to where, where it hits you best. So mm -hmm. if you take the pattern pieces and you put them up, and you're like, oh, that's a, that was a weird spot for me, just add or subtract as needed. So. Right. Kind of hard to see mm -hmm. in this print because of the nature of the print oh, and where the lines are. But Betsy, if you just want to turn around too, just you can kind of see more clearly, yeah, the ruffle one that's shorter, the yeah. lengthened one on the back. Yeah. Because so. I know like with um, the Zane, I have to, um, I have to lengthen this bodice piece here, the left bodice piece anyway. Mm -hmm. um, oh, otherwise okay. it hits me in a funny place. So I think you're right. I think depending on if you're tall or you know, petite or um, where you where your waistline hits, I think you might have to adjust yeah. where, where that, um, that left side. Yeah, because goes. if you think of it, um, so I'm five foot tall. So you, five ten. you're five ten. So <laughs> she might end up lengthening in it more than I would. So. Right. Um, the tu tutorial has measurements in it, but look at it and see how it works for your own self. Right. So, yeah, but it's just it's a rectangle piece, so you can. Oh yeah, you can, you super can change, easy, especially if you can easily change this piece. Yeah, there, so. yeah. So I and it was a really fun um, project to make. The the first one I made was like figuring out the steps and making sure that I had everything. Um, like where I wanted it. And then when I made this one, it was just, you said it was so fast. It was so fast. <laughs> um, and it was just like, it's such a fun, fun little shirt to wear. It's very cute. Thanks. I like it. This is an off topic question, but is the ET jacket good for a beginner sewer? So maybe talk about the ET and also maybe the E shrug, if that's what they mean. I don't know. Oh, oh well, the, the, e, um, the ET is a good beginning t shirt pattern. Um, and then the e-shrug um, is, is a good beginning um, jacket, knit jacket pattern. Um, so if that's what you're meaning. So the e-shrug is great because it doesn't even have a side seam. Um, so you just, there's shoulder seams. Um, there's a, you can learn how to set in a sleeve. Um, you can make the sleeve short or long. Um, you can even easily lengthen the jacket. So it's, you know, can be a crop jacket or it can be quite a bit longer. So it is a good beginning knit jacket. And just a reminder, because we haven't said it yet, but the ET is now also available up to size 5X. Correct. So. Mm -hmm. And the ET is a yeah, great basic beginning knit sewing garment to consider. Right. Yeah. Right. So the, the ET itself is similar to this silhouette here, the, the shape of the side seam, the length. <coughs> excuse me. Um, and the neckline, and then it has uh, just a simple sleeve. So. The, the main change is is the sleeve. It's just a simple short sleeve. And that ties in perfectly to what you're wearing, Erin. <laughs> <laughs> it does, if I can find my voice. Um, so this is um, the Edgewater dress that we put out last year. Mm -hmm. um, and it also has the ET um, bodice. So the same ET um, neckline, sleeve, um, shaping through the bust and through the waist, and then it has the change details at the bottom. So it has um, this great panel. I love this panel over here. So you can kind of see it, it 
comes out at the side here on the right side, and then there's an additional panel on the left side at the bottom that have these great rounded shapes. And so you can really play with it. Last year we put out kits, and we still have kits actually, mm -hmm. where we have a woven panel here, and it really accentuates the shape, which I think is really fun. And they're, they're color blocked. You know, we have a, a teal version, um, magenta version, green version, black and white version. Mm -hmm. uh, I yeah, really want the really black fun. and white version. Of course you do. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then I just want to, I just want you to um, turn around so they can see um, what she did here was she used um, the bamboo rib knit on the back just as like one other extra fabric and it mm -hmm. looks amazing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is a combination of jersey knits, rayon jersey knits, and then the bamboo mm -hmm. uh, rib knit. Such a nice summer dress, mm -hmm. like just cool and comfortable. Uh, is the Edgewater all knit? This one is that Erin's wearing, but we've been mentioning that it would be fun to consider adding wovens to the panel pieces, even right. grabbing some Liberty knits with a solid knit, kind of like we mentioned with the ET sleeve. Mm -hmm. You know, you could always add a, get a solid knit and then get a Liberty fabric that matches with it and add a Liberty to those panels, either mm -hmm. at the bottom, that right. very bottom band, that very bottom band, or Mm -hmm. So you, you could take that right. off and you could put this one on. Oh, that's true. Wouldn't that, that be lovely? Would be perfect match. Wouldn't that be lovely? Like that. And you could do the Edgewater dress with the ET sleeve variation. So you could okay. make the Edgewater yes. dress yeah. that Erin's mm -hmm. wearing and grab the ET sleeve option sleeves and do a gathered sleeve, do a tie sleeve, or do a pleated mm -hmm. sleeve. That's true. Lots of ideas, guys. <laughs> Uh, I have an old ET pattern with numbered sizes. Which size is the medium? Um, the uh, two is the medium. We did restructure the sizes to make them more in line with our most of our patterns, so extra small to XXL. Um, and so we did um, reformat that so it's not one through four anymore. It is extra small to XXL and then one X to, to five X. Um, so you know one corresponds to extra small, uh, one and a half corresponds to small, two, and, and so on. The one that gets tricky is we did combine three and three and a half for extra large because it had an extra size in there. Um, so, Just fun. Uh, yeah, I'm not really, don't really remember that conversation very well. So, um, but we just were trying to make things simple and more in line with our other sizes to make it easier for you. So. But if you, if you want to check on the website, we do have the measurement chart and we do still have the the numbered sizes, the one, mm -hmm. two, three, four, mm -hmm. so you can compare um, how that works with the the extra small, small sizing. So. Right, right. And just look at those measurements. Measure yourself. Measure mm -hmm. the pattern. Right. Exactly. <laughs> when in doubt, measure. Always measure yourself. Always measure the pattern. Mm -hmm. That is all the questions. So, what okay. is on sale? What's on sale today? Well, all. Of our beautiful Liberty collection is on sale. 15% off 15 all off. Liberties. So not just the ones on the wall, but all the Liberties mm -hmm. that are on the website, on the website. are 15% off. So this is your chance. Um, the Zane. The Zane is on sale. Um, it is 15% off. We have the tutorial for sale. It is a bargain price of $5. To make the Zane. To make the ruffled That Betsy Zane. has on. Mm -hmm. Um, the Venice is on sale, which is available both as printed or digital, right. in case you want a ruffle but you prefer a button-down look. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have the Venice tutorial from So Confident Series 8. Series 8, thank mm -hmm. you, on sale. And that is the tutorial that has those wonderful step-by-step -step gather instructions right. in case my uh, less detailed <laughs> technique um, need some more information and then oh and then also we have an extra tutorial that we released last year when we released the willow blouse which is a um, like it's a little history of Liberty of London tutorial and so it goes through the history of the store itself and then also some of their most popular fabric prints because they often use old prints I remember when this came out I think it was originally from like maybe 1967 and mm -hmm. it had been a home deck print but they 
recolored and resized, and so a lot of their designs have some really interesting stories. So you'll find that in the Liberty of London tutorial. Okay. Um, that's all our sale items. That's all our sale items. So don't forget about the challenge. As I said, we will post about it later. We'll put some information on the blog. We'll put some information on the Instagram. And we're super excited to see what you guys think. Um, and I think if there are additional questions about that, we will put a list out of yeah. like kind of the rules, the guidelines, everything yeah. that you'll need to know um, to give you a few more details um, when we have that ready yes. to go. So that will be later this week. Today is photo shoot day, and I'm just going to tell you that we have like 50 new fabrics that we're um, photographing. So if you don't know, there is a what's new section on the website. And they're not going up there today because we're just shooting them. But over the next week or so, those are going to start filtering in. So if you want to see all the hot off the truck new fabrics, keep an eye on that what's new section because um, it currently has a lot. We've had a lot of new fabric in. Right. So yeah, the photographer is very busy. She's very busy. Lisa is very busy down here. Um, <laughs> and that's that will take up the rest of our days rolling fabrics, shooting it. So. And quick reminder to. Linda will be filming a video live from Switzerland tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. She's excited to show you guys this cute boutique in a wonderful mountain town. So we'll be posting that as well. Sounds nice. lovely. It does. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the Liberty presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I hope you all run out and make a gathered zane, and we'd love to mm -hmm. see it. Don't forget to send us your photos even aside from the competition, because we like to see what you're making. Mm -hmm. So email me, Betsy, at sewingworkshop.com. All right, have a good day.